I think our self-loathing is so deep that we're constantly going to compare ourselves to other races to feel better about ourselves. We're going to compare ourselves to other denominations, other religions. Males are going to assume a position of superiority to females in, in a plethora of ways to try to bolster their fragile self-esteem. And until we experience the security that God is crazy about us because of the work of Jesus for us and not because of our own performance, can we actually stop with that nonsense of constantly um, comparing ourselves and trying to find worth through us supposedly seeing ourselves as better than each other? The reason why we are so strong in this church concerning the message and the preaching of the principles of grace is because unless you are radical about it, they do not work. And what happens is there are people that receive a teaching, they put it to work maybe somewhat that week, but then they go back to the traditional understanding and they release the power of grace against them. In other words, it doesn't work for them. Whether it's racism or sexism or anything else, the only thing that makes us courageous enough to face the reality of the sin that yet remains is the gospel, is grace, is, okay, I am finally free to be able to admit that I fail And sometimes, not only do I fail, but I am completely unaware of the ways in which I fail. The only thing that makes me able to admit that is the free preaching of grace and justification, which is that I may be much more of a racist than I think I am, and I pray I'm not, but I may be, but even so... I am completely forgiven, and I'm completely righteous. And that's the only message that gives me the courage to be able to look at my own heart, and of course not to spend forever doing that, but to look at my own heart and admit the ways in which I continue to fail and continue to be blind to my own sin. And that's not to say, okay, well, I'm forgiven, so it doesn't matter. Oh, no, now I know I'm forgiven and loved, therefore I can get after it. The Word of God says that we walk by faith, but we stand in grace. Now, have you ever seen a person who is able to walk before they can stand? No, no one can walk before they can stand. And the Lord said this to me in my heart. He said, this is one of the reasons why the faith of the people of God is not working as it should. Because until you are standing in undeserved favor, Your faith is not going to work as it ought. You first of all have to be convinced that you're accepted by God, that the finished work of Jesus has already procured for you everything that God wants to give you. Now you can access it by faith. And so until you are standing firmly in the grace of God, you will constantly have these short circuits in faith because you cannot Walk before you stand. I found out through my study of God's word, through uh, revelation from the spirit of grace, that it wasn't my works and my actions that were generating the blessings of God in my life. It was, it was the finished work of Jesus Christ, that which he did at Calvary. And when I got that revelation, it just it, it freed me up. It freed me up in such a way that I could really serve God and give him the glory that that he deserves without the pressure of living a life that if I make a mistake, if I fall, God is mad, he's angry, he's withholding. That is certainly not the God that that is presented in the Bible. I, I hope that when I tell people about the love of God, they feel good. And I don't apologize for that. I hope I hope that actually evokes a feeling in somebody go, Well, me? Yeah, that's part of it. But I don't think God's a sky fairy patting everybody on the head. I mean, he, he is the judge of the universe. He is holy. He is transcendent. He is the almighty God who has laws and rules. And yeah, like, I'm not about to like diminish that. In fact, I did my dissertation on the wrath of God in Europe. And that's what drove me to write about the love of God. was the fact that I can't believe this all holy God would love us. And then, well, if Jesus loves me and Jesus loves you, that makes Jesus loves us. 
And that talks about Jesus loves the community, the church as well. Paul says, I am free from all. What does that mean? It means I don't give a rip what you think. I'm free. I don't have the burden of not being free on me anymore. So I'm going to dance and sing and laugh and I'm going to show you my freedom. The world is bound and they don't know it, but they're sad and they know that. The world is in prison of meaninglessness and darkness and depression. The world is bound up and you've been set free. 